Okay, uh, so we were talking about, uh, we finished this topic last time. We were talking about uh, the action of camera on points and lines. Uh, and uh, uh, these are the key results. I'm just uh, stating them again for the purpose of revision. So a camera, this is what a camera model is. A camera model is a three by four matrix. We wrote it in canonical view where there is no extrinsic 3D rigid body transformation on the camera. Uh, so the camera coordinate system is aligned with the world coordinate system uh, or in general if there is a rotation and a translation a rigid body transformation of the camera you have to incorporate that uh, in in the view in general uh, we also talked about um, in the camera coordinate frame the camera canonical view frame you can uh, if you know a direction d in the three world 3d world you can find the vanishing point in that direction simply by v is equal to kd we did the special case of this which was the uh, direction of uh, x-axis y-axis and z-axis of the world also but this is for any direction but the direction for this simple relationship to hold the direction has to be uh, specified in the camera coordinate system okay uh, we talked about uh, so uh, we talked about forward projection so this is what backward projection is uh, back projection is back projection means if I give you a pixel coordinate, can you tell me which ray along the world will that pixel coordinate be? And we saw that that's, uh, in general, that's P plus X plus lambda C, where P plus is the pseudo inverse definition. And if we are talking about the camera canonical coordinate system, then it's simply D is equal to K inverse X, which is a very simple relationship. And this actually tells us what is encoded in the matrix K. Uh, the matrix K is the matrix which allows you to convert a pixel into a direction in the world because that's what that's what's happening here that's the only information about the camera that you're providing um, so so in essence I did I didn't cover this but uh, because you can take every pixel and, and convert it into a direction in the world uh, you can actually measure the angle between two pixels because you can make this ray and you can make that ray and then just take their dot product and that will be the angle. Uh, so the camera is like a, like a protractor device. It, it can measure angles actually if you know the int intrinsic parameters of the camera. Okay. Um, then we talked about ca action of camera on lines and lines, uh, the fundamental property of a pinhole camera is that lines in the world map to lines in an image. Uh, and a line L, uh, if you want to forward project a line, that's straightforward. I covered that in the slides. If you want to back project a line, that will actually span a plane in the world. Uh, and that plane is given by P transpose L, where P is the camera matrix. Um, the normal of the plane formed by back projecting a line is given by K transpose L in the camera coordinate system. Uh, so the normal is in the camera coordinate system. And the vanishing line of the plane which when you are given a normal can be found by K minus transpose L. Okay. Uh, so these are some uh, few basic fundamental results that I wanted to cover. There are, there are more results, but I skipped over those just in, in the interest of time. Uh, but these are some very fundamental results that help you work with cameras, especially in a scenario where there's a camera looking at the ground plane, you can figure out where the horizon line is through these results. Or if you know the horizon line, you can actually figure out the tilt of the camera, the, the normal of the ground plane with respect to the camera, uh, if, if, uh, if the horizon line can be specified, okay? All right, any questions before we proceed further? All right, so I, I want to talk about a different type of camera now uh, to conclude this topic of cameras, uh, uh, camera models. And uh, essentially, this is the topic, the topic that I'm covering right now is single view geometry we we are talking about the geometry of a single picture because later inshallah we'll talk about geometry of multiple images which will which will have more stuff to it but right now we are talking about the geometry of a single picture uh, and and that's why we are talking about cameras because the camera takes that picture and we under we understand that now in terms of camera model which is what relates the world points the world coordinates to the image coordinates inside the camera Okay, so I'm going to talk about another type of camera that we haven't discussed yet, and it's actually very useful sometimes to talk about this type of camera, which is called an orthographic camera. So far, we have been discussing the perspective camera, which is also the pinhole camera, okay, but we also call it the perspective camera. Uh, so an orthographic camera is in some ways uh, fundamentally different from a perspective camera, okay. So the cameras that you have in your phones, 
uh, or uh, SLR cameras or so on are in general you can approximate them with a perspective camera you can approximate them with a phenol camera okay and this camera type is actually different from that and we'll see why okay so uh, <clears throat> this is something that you have uh, seen in your homework I'll, I'll, I'll use this as motivation right so let's say that the camera is looking at an object like like this uh, this picture here okay and let's say what I do is I go backwards okay and then I zoom in to this scene again so as to keep approximately the same view okay so if I do that what is happening is that this is how I was observing the object this is where my camera was so if I go further away and then zoom in I'm, I'm seeing the same portion of the object but these rays are now more parallel as they reach the camera okay and so I get a view like this okay and in fact I've given you a GIF sequence in which this sort of thing is happening uh, in in your homework and you have to derive the relationship there okay now um, now in the limit that I I just go infinitely far away and then zoom into the same portion of the image if I can do that uh, then these rays that will hit the camera will actually become parallel okay the more the more non-parallel they are the more perspective distortion I have in my images the more parallel they become the more like flat type of projection my my image becomes okay um, so 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 essentially what is happening is that I'm moving the camera center further and further away which is which is what in terms of camera parameters it's an increase in focal length right because if the camera center is further away from the image plane then it's an increase in focal length all right so we call so so we have the notion now of a camera at infinity so far we have been talking about points at infinity okay but now we can have a notion of a camera at infinity if the camera center moves back from the scene to infinity then all the rays that are entering the camera will be parallel okay because the camera itself is at infinity so any point that you image is kind of like any other point you image the rays emanating from them by the time they reach the camera because the camera is at infinity will be parallel because they are they are the camera center is essentially at infinity and those rays have to meet there okay to take an image the rays have to meet there but the point that they will now meet at is at infinity and therefore the rays must be parallel right because parallel lines meet at infinity all right uh, so here's a picture for that uh, let's say uh, let's say this is my camera center this is this is right now a finite camera a normal camera that that we have been used to uh, so so if I so let's say I'm I'm looking at this uh, this plane which is tilted with respect to the camera so the image points will be made here and we know we saw this diagram before uh, that these points will get I mean these lengths between the points will get shorter and shorter even though these lengths are equal and that's because the distance from the camera is changing and that's a fundamental property of the pinhole camera right uh, so these distances are equal but these distances are not equal and that describes a finite camera we call this this a finite camera because the camera center is a finite point all right um, and this is the type of picture I would get from that camera notice here uh, let me try to my pen. okay uh, oops okay so notice here that these lines are not parallel okay in fact they will meet at a, at a point somewhere here right um, and and this line actually is also parallel to this in the world so it will also meet at the same point okay um, this type of projection that I've drawn here well it turns out that this line and this line are parallel okay and this line and this line are also parallel but that's just because of the way I chose the camera to be where it is in the world in general all of them could have been non-parallel okay if I if I position the camera at a third from them and the reason these lines are non-parallel uh, these ones the reason they are non-parallel is because the point the depth of this point with and the depth of this point with respect to the camera which means the distance from the camera is not the same 
So since these points have a different z coordinate and I'm dividing by the z coordinate in the camera model, remember fx over z, fy over z. So I'm dividing by the z coordinate. So if the z coordinate changes, the, 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 the points shrink together, which is what's happening here. Okay, so that's a normal camera that you are used to. But if I move, if I take this camera center and I throw it to infinity in that way, which means I make the focal length infinite, okay, then this is the type of projection that I will see. All rays that are reaching the camera center will actually be parallel. If I take a cut of that, notice what happens in this camera. These equal distances in the world are now equal distances in the image. They are not the same distance. This length is actually smaller than this length. In fact, in fact, if this angle is theta, then this length is about cosine theta of this, right? But, but they are actually equal in, in the camera image also, okay? So, so these equal lengths will now map to equal lengths in the camera because there is no convergence of rays happening and so there is no foreshortening which is going to happen in this camera in the limit that the camera center goes to infinity. No, actually you can't have a camera center at infinity so you might say why are we discussing this but, but let's come to that step by step. Okay, so, so this is the picture of that camera. Uh, it's, it's, it's a camera at infinity and the picture, the, the, the sort of image of a cube that I will get out of this camera will not have a foreshortening effect in it. It will not have that convergence of lines effect in it because all the rays that enter this camera are actually parallel to each other because of the camera center is at infinity. Yes, question. No, 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 not at all, right? Uh, the question is that what if the focal length is small, but the camera is like really far away from, really fra far away from the object, uh, but, but how will you make the image? You will join this to that, right? So yeah, you, you, you can make this angle pretty small, but if there is another object here, you will have to join like this, well, with a straight line. That's not pretty straight that I drew, right? But but remember, a, an image pixel here will go like this, and an image pixel here will go like this. So you 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 can't rid of that. You can't get rid of that for sure thing effect like this. Okay. Uh, when when this focal length is infinite, when this f is infinite, then that's when it ensures that the rays meeting at the camera center are actually parallel to each other. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. It's actually difficult to think about two things at infinity which are actually close together, right? Because infinity plus two is also infinity. So it's actually difficult to mathematically think about that. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So let's let's not think about infinity. Let's say that this is pretty far away. But if it is pretty far away, but, but the film is pretty close to it, what about the image point that will be formed here? That will be a ray going in this direction. And what about the image point going formed here? That will be a ray going in this direction. These are clearly not rays in the same direction. Okay. Only when I only when I move the film like very far away, will this ray and this ray be be the same parallel line if if the relationship is that the focal length is infinity. Okay, so that's the effect I'm talking about. Otherwise, I won't get rid of the force shortening effect. I might minimize it, but I won't get rid of it. Okay. All right, so this is a new type of camera. Now, now you have kind of seen this camera before. Maybe not in real images, but all of you have seen like maybe art architectural drawings. When we are making architectural drawings, like an, this, is, this is called an elevation view. What I'm showing here is an elevation view. So in these elevation views, you actually don't want any foreshortening to happen. You don't want, because this is an architectural drawing, the purpose here is not to show things which are further away to be smaller in size than things which are uh, closer to you, okay? So, so, so this, this example of drawing you have already seen and it's also termed sometimes parallel projection because parallel lines remain parallel in this projection. They don't converge like in a perspective projection. Um, uh, this, uh, 
this this portion of the house for example these windows are further away from these windows right They're, they might be quite a distance at the back but i actually can't judge that too much from this view i'll have to look at the other view from this side to be able to judge how far back they are because the perspective cue is now missing which which was there in the other building so you can you have these types of orthographic views or parallel views from different sides of a 3d object in these types of drawings okay uh, so what type of projection is this is this a parallel projection a orthographic projection is this a camera at infinity or is it a finite camera how will i judge Uh, yeah, say that louder. So you're saying the front post, this one, right? Um, so you're saying that this post uh, looks smaller than what it should be here. Okay. Does everyone see that or, or you disagree with it? Yeah. The windows are also larger at the back than, than, than in the front. Now, in reality, it's just your mind playing tricks. It, they are not. You can measure this distance that I drew. And uh, the, the reason your mind is playing tricks here is because your mind is, your eye is a perspective camera. It's like a pinhole camera, right? And so you are so used to seeing perspective images that when I show you something which is not perspective, which is not reducing at the back in size, you actually think that the back is larger than the front. It's not actually in this picture. Okay, if you go about and measure this in pixels, it's it's actually the windows are the same size. Okay, I can maybe 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 draw a line here on this window, and then draw a line here at this window, and maybe maybe that might convince you. But really, you can take this slide and measure these if you want to. Um, so, what type of projection? So. So the key, to, the key to judging that is look at lines that you know are parallel in the world, okay? So you know, for example, that this, li uh, this line, okay, and this line are parallel in the world. So you try to find out whether they are indeed parallel in the image or not, okay? If you can, if you can find any pair of lines which were parallel in the world but are not parallel in this image, then this is not a parallel projection. It's like a finite camera. But if you can't find any pair of lines which are really parallel in the world and they are, and then they are, they are not parallel in this image, then, then it's an orthographic projection or an infinite camera. In this case, this is an orthographic projection. If you look at all the set of lines uh, that were there, for example, these two lines, they are parallel in the world and they are parallel in the image also, okay? This, on the other hand, is clearly a perspective projection. Here, here, um, this uh, this window length, for example, and this window length are are clearly different. I mean, this line, if I draw here, is about about this big. Okay, and uh, if you sorry, if you look at, for example, um, if you look at uh, this line, let me try to draw that this line. And uh, for example, this line. Okay, you clearly see that they are they are uh, converging in the world. They are non-parallel, even though in the real world they were parallel, but in the image they are not parallel. Yes. Yeah, that's why I have to draw these lines. Well, this. I used a pretty low focal length, a very small focal length to, to draw this picture so that the perspective distortion effect, the effect of the far away things getting smaller with respect to the nearby things is actually very enhanced, okay? And so it's quite easy to see. Our brain is used to seeing perspective distortion, so it compensates it somewhat, but not perfectly. So so here it's easy to see and you can, you can actually put a ruler or a line on this and then say uh, the reason is that your brain is not used to seeing this too much and therefore that's where that that kind of uh, per perception effect was coming in that you pointed out that it looks like that the back is larger uh, even though it really is not 
okay the, i i generated these images synthetically in sketchup uh, so so i know which camera i used <laughs> okay but you can actually measure from these cameras also okay so for example this image of lums campus it's kind of like a course model of lums campus is this orthographic or uh, perspective perspective orthographic orthographic yeah and this one this one is clearly perspective okay so i'm trying to give you a sense of what type of images these cameras generate and here you can see that these lines converge and these lines converge in fact in fact you can you can tell where the uh, where the horizon is going to be if you find out where these lines converge maybe like here and where these lines converge maybe somewhere out here and then you draw that join those two points that is where the line at infinity of this ground plane is going to be you actually don't see the ground plane really i mean uh, there's no color shading to show you the ground plane but you can actually find the the ground plane line at infinity uh, the image of that from from this geometry because you know that these lines are parallel okay all right so so we we have talked about perspective distortion in one of the previous lectures also uh, the perspective distortion is the effect that further away objects appear smaller in size okay uh, now these two bottles here uh, the red and the blue bottle that I show are are like the same height in the world okay but but they are but they are in in uh, they, they have drastically different depth from the camera okay now here I'm talking about a finite camera a perspective camera now if I have low focal length, which th this 18 millimeter is focal length in millimeters, okay? So if I have low focal length, notice how big a difference in the size that I have for them, okay? It's, it's a huge difference in size because I'm close to this red bottle. The camera is close to this red bottle, but it has low focal length. Now what has been done here is in this image is that the camera moved back but zoomed in. Zooming in means 